Our 2021 season is almost at an end. Our final stop was Gozo before we returned to Sicily in what turns out to be a nail-biting entrance into the marina. We lost steerage. This is Cordelia, our Venus catch. This is Steve. I'm Annette and this is the cutest member of our crew, Gus. Our dream was 10 years in the planning. In the end, you only ever regret the chances you didn't take. The sky looks nice and blue anyway. It's warm. It is. It's um, the 20... no, it's the 30th. 30th of oh, uh, September. September, yep. And it must be about 27 degrees, would you say? 28 degrees? 27, 28. We're in Gozo, north of Malta. That was Gozo, north of Malta. This beautiful building, Casa de San Giuseppe, with its magnificent views over the harbour, has stood empty for eight years. Built in 1925 as an orphanage, it became famous in Gozo for a musical band which was made up so of the pretty. orphans that were living there. In its latter years, it became a youth hostel and it has had some fantastic reviews. It has stood like this for eight years, awaiting the go-ahead to turn it into an old person's retirement complex, the argument being that they need to leave as much of the old building as possible. I've absolutely no idea where we are. That's what you're doing. No. I have no idea where we are, I have no idea where we're going, we've got our phones. That's pretty. Imagine living right next to that when the bells go off. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Isn't it beautiful, Steve? Look, look at it. Yeah. When we popped over to Gozo, we anchored up in Marca Harbour, which is the ferry terminal from uh, Malta and a couple of the other islands around here. In the town overlooking the harbour is the San Zealand Church. The name San Zealand means peaceful spring. And all around the church is spring waters that feed into public wash basins and water spouts. Oh. We got that at the right time. Get up, you dirty animal. <laughs> you turn yourself into a yo yo. There's a place over there. That's quite modern, look. I know. Oh, no, I don't know how well you can see me. Uh, it's the first of October. We're just leaving Gozo for Marina de Ragusa, which is where we're going to spend the winter. I don't want to say too much because this is really the end of our kind of summer 2021 sailing season. But we're looking forward to going back to the UK next week. Bittersweet, I suppose the only way to describe it. We're going to have a good sail today, hopefully. The weather's looking good for us. Excuse me. Yes. Um, and yeah, the weather's looking good for us, so we should have a good sail. And uh, we, it's half past six in the morning now. 
we should be there about four o'clock this afternoon. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it's just because we're between the islands. It's funneling a bit. the engine off. I caught a fish. I think it was a Spanish sardine. Spanish sardine. Oh no, Spanish mackerel I mean. <laughs> oh we would have it for lunch but I don't think I'm going to be able to go down. You say that, but the other day you told me we wouldn't be going until after the weekend. So, no, after the second. Yeah. Because it's very difficult to get a, a forecast that's not complete bollocks. A bit like this one. No, this was forecast. You can't say it wasn't forecast. As we got nearer to um, Ragusa, there was a a big yellow pattern. No, sorry, a small yellow patch going past Ragusa well, on wave, Windy. The, the wave state said it was going to be 0.6 to 0.8. Well, some of them are. <laughs> That's the ones on top. <laughs> you have to look like that. Well, because I know there's, uh, there's uh, potential for shit. No, there's not. No, there's not. Right. No, this is a serious question now. What would you say the highlight of your summer 2021 has been? Cock Beach. I can't put that in. <laughs> I can't put that in, can I? Come on, be serious. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. I don't think there's been one one thing that has stuck has necessarily been head and shoulders about above the others. No, I have to agree with you there because um, when we were in the Aeolian Islands there were times we were saying oh my god this is just beautiful could live here but you yeah. can't live there and then, I, and then I'm thinking oh yeah but I really like and then I think oh yeah but then I really liked and, and then I kind of yeah, I mean, I loved Ithaca. No, I would agree with you. I mean, I loved Ithaca. Um, it's just so pretty. But then Spartacori was really pretty, but you couldn't live there, could you? No. I oh, know, the thing is, there was, it, it went on. I loved Corfu, Old Town. 
Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Two Rock Bay. Lovely. Yeah, I didn't like Pooh Corner though. Murta Savotta. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots and lots of it. If I had to be pinned down, it would probably be Murta The entrance into Marina de Ragusa is narrow and fairly shallow at times. We'd been warned to radio ahead to let them know of our arrival due to the dredging of the entrance that had started a couple of weeks previously. Having been given the OK to proceed into the marina, we approached very slowly. We hate berthing in marinas at the best of times. We've owned Cordelia for nearly 14 years and if you own a boat you know that when you hear something after that length of time of owning a boat you know whether it's wrong or right or if you feel something you know whether it's wrong or right. When we left the anchorage early that morning I should have told Steve that whilst at the helm I felt something different. However it was so quick and so sh small that I soon forgot about it. I'll come back to this later. The first hurdle was the marineros who were guiding us to our berth had asked us to hold station on the bend into the pontoons. We'd berthed in this marina last year but due to a change of plan and of us not going to the Caribbean we decided that MDR was our best, op best option. We're also a Italian residents so that helped too. However this year the marina had placed us amongst the big boys, much to our horror. To get an understanding of exactly where we were going, we first of all drove past the berth that we were being led to. We had to abort our first attempt of getting into the berth and this was down to pure fear of hitting another boat. At this point the marinero jumped out of his dinghy and was on the dock beckoning us and calling us into the berth. We started to turn Cordelia around and at this point mid turning around with boats and catamarans all around us we lost steerage. A couple of other owners who realised that we were in trouble ran to get their roaming fenders to protect their own boats. We managed to get the marinero to understand we were in trouble and he called for assistance. The idea was to bump us into the berth using two dinghies. To add to the chaos, the assisted dinghy got his prop caught around another boat's mooring lines. Not once, but twice. Luckily, the berth that we were going into was big enough for a cat, so we could only hope that the marineros were capable of getting us in without scraping an another boat. Finally, as we were bounced into reverse into our spot, we breathed a sigh of relief. Unfortunately, with all the chaos, we'd forgotten that we only had the one camera going on the back of the boat, as you can see. This meant that we didn't catch most of the drama. So, what had happened? After a celebratory drink, we started, started to investigate how and why this had happened. Our prop was still there, but was spinning on the shaft. The st steering cables were still in place. Finally, we found out that the keyway pin had, came, had come out. Looks as if it had been sheared off, leaving the prop 
spinning on the shaft. Going back to what had happened earlier that morning, as we were leaving the anchorage, Steve had just lifted the anchor and I was turning Cordelia around to head out. Just for a nanosecond, I felt something very different at the helm, just like I couldn't steer. It went as quickly, quickly as it had come. When I told Steve about this later, he bollocked me and said that I should have told him. But at the time, it was such a quick thing that had happened, I just didn't think anything of it. The good thing is that it happened in a marina and not out at sea. The work will be one of the very first jobs that we do when we return from our trip to the UK. We'd like to thank the Marineros for a fantastic job and the way that they got us in so smoothly. After all that, we didn't hit any boat or catamaran. With the help of fellow berth holders, we were finally able to digest what had happened. We were so very, very lucky that it had happened in the marina. Thanks to all of those that had helped uh, both the Marineros and the people around us. I don't know what we'd have done without you. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment. We love to hear from you. Hope you never, ever have to experience what we did. Bye, guys.